Hi everybody. Come on in. Uh, we got to do a little bit of business first uh, because um, before I can send this one, Mr. Uh, Lucas, can you please send me on the email your phone number because uh, we have to do online customer reports and they require, they won't let us print it with the, all the information we need unless it has a phone number so they can contact you when it arrives. So if you're listening, <laughs> thank you. Um, and the other thing is we have not heard from two people since we did the job draw. So, um, Carmen Trevazero, if you're listening, please email me at carolynorchids at yandex.com. Uh, orchid, uh, Carolyn Orchid Friends at Yandex.com, and I'll make sure it's below the video because uh, um, I need to hear from you. And also, oh, we have this great big parcel all wrapped sitting here waiting to go, and we have not heard from Judy Jones. Now, Judy, we've tried to get a hold of you, like we even Googled your name, but there's so many Judy Joneses and we really don't know. So, please, this is our last call. Um, or we're going to have to draw for these two things again. And luckily, we have kept the last tickets from the draw. We didn't get rid of them. So, if we do not hear by September 3rd, the first video I do after September 3rd, we will be redrawing for these two things. Um, <laughs> it's something I can't leave sitting around the house forever, and we have been very patient. So this is last call. We've sent emails under the comment section where your name is. We've sent two emails to each trying to uh, in the comments trying to get hold of you. So this is our last call. <laughs> I know you could be sick or you could be on holidays or something, but we're hoping to hear from you before September 3rd. So that's our business out of the way. Now, orchids. Um, this video is very important because um, I want to make sure your orchids are healthy, but in caring for your orchids, I want to make sure you are healthy. Now, if you're using a product that may not be safe for your orchids, or you, or it might be safe, but you're not uh, using the proper methods for that thing. So we want to discuss a few things um, about our orchids to to make sure we totally understand that what we do when we might see scale or another insect of some kind on our orchids. So um, orchids are very uh, hardy and, and they really don't, they're very healthy too. They really don't get too many things. But if you're overcrowding them and you've got leaves touching, you're more susceptible to having problems. So try and keep a little space between each one. Now, some insects crawl, but some do fly and they may get there anyway. But you also want good air circulation, um, especially during some weather periods. Now, we have ceiling fans, which do a good job, but um, it, we've been more too hot and dry, so not usually going to have a problem with too hot and dry, but if it's cool where you have your orchids, and, uh, and then you better be watering in the morning, you better have waste. If it's cool and damp, they could get disease too, so you don't want them to be cool and damp, so after they're watered, put on a fan, 
make sure they're going to dry off and not get cool in the evening before evening comes. So um, the other thing is, the most, most often thing is because your orchid has been overwatered. <laughs> And I always say, on watering day, check inside the pot. Now, the top is always dry. Mine is always bone dry. Now, I do not put uh, moss on the top. If I did, and years ago, I tried that method because I heard about it. But for me, it just dries on forever, trying to keep the moss wet, and then I'm getting too wet in the pot. So I just go with straight bark. And we're not an over-humid area. Our average in the house would be about 40% humidity. Now, uh, if it's raining outside and I open the windows, it, I can get it up to 60%. But if it's been really dry for two months like it has been, and the humidity it, is not really high, then I make sure my misters are on, are on and I mist in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon and I they have been fine they have been fine <laughs> they've done better than a lot of people so um, that's one thing I wanted to say the other thing is your lighting you should never be giving your your orchids more than 16 hours of light that would be the top amount and if you're using um, artificial lighting, then you want a nice mix of your cool and warm, your blue and your red light. So um, that's a good thing. Uh, and and uh, place it about six inch abo inches above your highest plant. You don't want that light too close. Um, also, when you're... Uh, orchids are in extreme growth, like uh, we're on the extra nitrogen we're giving them. We want to make sure they're getting their calcium. And with my water schedule, which I gladly give to anybody that asks for it, I've been using it for quite a while now, and I think it's very good. It's a very safe water schedule. It's uh, supplying what they need, and we're also giving them a little calcium with ever watering, even though I use tap water. And in most cases, in most places, tap water is fine for watering orchids, but you do not want softened water. So, um, now, let's talk about bugs. Now, every watering day, the best, best way to avoid having serious bug issues is by keeping up with them. So if you're watering once a week, uh, then make sure you're on the lookout for scale. Now if you see one and there's a female, there could be a lot of eggs under her. Don't pass it up. If you see one, get it right away. <laughs> and I want to show you what I do. On watering day, and I do find them, but I catch them when they're just one or two. Now, where are they? They're under the leaves. They can follow the edge of the leaf. They can follow the center of the leaf. That little part that now when we rip our dry yellow leaves off, we rip down and down, they can hide under that little spot. And uh, also, if, if your orchid is in flower, they can go all the way up the stem. So I often wipe up the stem, even if I don't see them. And then if you see little dots on your flower, it's probably a bug. And the best way to deal with them is right away before they turn into too many and travel to another orchid. So on watering day, it is also the perfect time to check them out. Now, a lot of times, the leaves are so hard, like these leaves are so hard, and if I was to bend them up, I'd probably break them. Um, so, 
if you can get a light under them. Now, I have this little pen light. It has a really nice light on it. And I can just stand at a different angle because this is my light. And I can look under each leaf. And it is a good idea to do that. And you just, uh, it's better to find them right away because quite often if you have a, a plant that doesn't look like it's doing too well or uh, the leaves are going yellow quicker than you thought, especially look under those bottom leaves or ones that are starting to change color because maybe they're going to drop. Because what happens is they are um, They are piercing and sucking insects. And quite often if you feel something sticky or it's even dried and it's crumbly, you could have scale. So that's what you want to keep clean and be on the lookout for little round things. And most often it is brown scale. Um, I forget how many different types there is. A lot of different types of scale. So. Um, when I see them, I, I have those uh, little makeup pads you get at the Dollar Tree. And I, I use them, and I just dip it in the water of the choice that day, whatever I am on, on my watering schedule. And I make sure I wipe the bottom of the leaf very lightly. But I look first, I get down there, and if I have to, I will use a magnifying glass. But if you see a little round dot that's either pale yellow or brown or quite dark, that comes off. So if you just wipe lightly in the places where you might find them, you can get it with just water. Because you haven't got, if you catch it early, you're not going to have to use something hazardous to your plant. We'll get into that in a minute. And hazardous to you. And the other way, if you're going to use hydrogen peroxide to uh, or rubbing alcohol, 70% alcohol to, to kill them, then just put a little bit in a small dish and get a Q-tip. Just do those spots. And then once you've got them, then just wipe them off and just rinse with water because it is drying. You don't want to be using that alcohol continually underneath your leaves. It will dry them, and and and, and it won't be won't be a good thing. Don't not do the entire leaf, just spots. And that's the the good thing about not being commercial. We're just growing our orchids in our home, and we're with them a lot. So even if you don't have time to do it when you're watering. Pick another day. Maybe you're at, they're at the window. Grab a chair. Just uh, start looking at them. Or just kind of baby one at a time. <laughs> they won't mind the extra attention. And uh, just make sure. And if they're on the flower bud, that, like sometimes, if they're even way down in the crevice, you can get something that's pointed like a skewer. And you can just kind of pull up on it. Or you could put a little bit of alcohol on the end of that skewer and just get it that way. But don't be putting it anywhere because if it's just one or two, you're just finding a few. Because if you start to find a whole bunch, then they can grow so fast you don't want you don't want that to happen. So um, there's other other diseases like uh, mealybugs, they also are piercing and sucking, but they can fly. So if you see anything in, in the dry sheaths on some plants, you can peel that off. And, and that's from re another reason is I do that with the yellow leaves now and I make sure I go down. So um, now it's important and I'm not real good at this, that we look for a healthy plant when we get a plant. If there's any sign that plant isn't healthy, um, 
or if you find you have a plant that has more than one or two uh, uh, bugs on it, it might be a good idea to change your media and have a good look at the plant because um, some bugs, like mealy bugs, will be in the soil. I, I think they like um, I think they like nitrogen or something. But anyway, they will be in the medium. And if there's a sign of more than just one, two, three scale, you're going to have to change your media, wash your plant down, have a real good look, and put it back before it moves into other plants. So, now, hydrogen peroxide. Now, how many of you have noticed, you know, when I first started doing videos, and I used to watch, uh, you know, Miss Orchid Girl, and a lot of my still watch her, she's very good. And uh, in 2014 and, and earlier, a lot of people on these uh, videos were using 3% hydrogen peroxide straight from the bottle and, and that's how I started. I started also doing that and um, and not because I read any of the new there's some new videos out about hydrogen peroxide and um, I'll put a link to a couple articles under uh, probably in the description. So um, I did it too, but if you've noticed for a long time, when I repot, I'm not spraying my orchid roots anymore. And I, and I haven't been for some time. If I need to use it, I spot use it. Um, also, I used to use it for um, uh, fruit uh, uh, gnats. Gnats and fruit flies are almost the same, but it's a time of year for fruit flies, but gnats because they get in the soil and then they multiply so quick. So, um, but from everything I've been reading lately, you really shouldn't use it straight. And I did a lot of research. Um, hydrogen peroxide can burn and destroy the velamen of your orchid. It isn't something you should be using like continually on your orchid. And um, it will hinder the absorption of water. So this is not good. And if it's going to kill good bacteria, it, it will kill good and bad. So <laughs> do you remember Marilyn Monroe? Well, what do you think they bleached their hair blonde with? 3% hydrogen peroxide. And you should read what it does over time to hair. So, um, I have learned from experience, and I want to show you, and I also want to show you, and I will put the link to this. Here is, um, I'm not saying don't use hydrogen peroxide. I'm saying use it safely safely for your plant. They've even come out and said that it's not the best thing for wounds anymore where everybody used to spray all their wounds continually. But here, um, I'll give you the li list to this article using hydrogen peroxide. And inside here is um, a watering schedule and this person that put this up will explain how they came about it and whatever. So to spray, to spray a sick or fungusy plant, they have how much water, how much peroxide, and what percent peroxide per the water. So you're not overusing it, but it will do its job. And it's good at doing its job, but you don't want to do so much that you're actually causing damage. Um, and maybe you would like to try something non-toxic first, like uh, there's a soap with no ammonia, there's Linda soap, and you just get it in your, in your sink where you wash your water and you just mush it around and get a little bit of soap and that's all. You don't need to use a lot. 
and some people use baby shampoo and and what they do is you have a tiny little bit of baby shampoo uh, in a mister and mist the plant let it sit for 15 minutes and rinse it off completely and uh, that seems to work um, neem oil is non-toxic it's uh, safe for humans animal animals and it's safe for beneficial insects insects but if you use it too much and too often it can interrupt the reproduction cycle of good insects and cinnamon which is very good especially for crown rot but be careful when you're using cinnamon that you're only putting it where it needs to be it can dry out never get it on the ends of your your aerial roots it can dry them out don't let the whole plant get it just put it where you need it and it will do its job so um also uh some people use uh i always have uh diatomaceous <laughs> earth that's what you kill some crawling insects with and it's it's powdered glass and uh it will even kill bees and butterflies if they eat it but some people that have problem with uh, bugs in their soil like mealy bugs will put a sprinkling of that on the top of the medium just to it, it will kill them but just make sure you don't have other things you're killing at the same time and whenever you're going to use anything always always um there's lots of information on the internet and we can use that information wisely you can't just read one and figure it goes with what you say and and not read another you have to read a lot <laughs> and then you have to weigh all the information what you think is right now uh, here is a real doozy so some people are using here it is potassium permanganate okay now first this um, it is safe when used properly uh, it has its purposes I will put a couple links in the description it has its purposes but do not take it lightly if you're using it seriously check out the MDS papers on it the use now um, I know uh, some orchid companies people growing in greenhouses with big big areas they use it as a, a cleaning thing they use it properly with the proper uh, consideration for their body and other people so um, it's not to be taken lightly um, it it can cause a lot of problems if not used safely and properly and it should be kept out of the reach of children there have been children that uh, have had serious eye damage you're not supposed to breathe the dust or fumes from this you're supposed to wear rubber gloves um, it's uh, it can cause serious eye damage and it can cause short-term aquatic hazard and long-term hazard now this was a good article um, now it's a purple color when mixed in water but not always I think it comes in black and another color but keep it away from heat and hot surfaces and sparks and open flames now something about that do you know what they're using to to create you know how a fire is burning and they want to start a controlled burn do you know what they use to start that controlled burn here in BC it was on the news last week potassium permanganate 
and uh, I think the other one was glycol. And it's in, they're called bombs, and they drop them, and they count on fire, and they start the fire burning against the other fire. It's, it's not something to be taken lightly. Um, do not breathe the dust or mist. Keep away from your clothing. Do not eat, drink, or smoke when using this product. Avoid releasing it into the environment. Wear protective gloves and clothing and protect your face at all times. If inhaled, move the person to fresh air and call the poison center. Now, you can use it safely. It does a good job, but be aware of what else. If, is it worth, is there something else you can use? Is it worth having that around where pets might get it, children might get it? Um, uh, now, it is used for uh, some people with skin issues, um, uh, dermatitis or maybe eczema, uh, different skin issues. It's used for some medical things. It's used in the drinking water. But properly and very, very low amounts. You just can't say, oh, this is how much you use. No, you can't. There's there's specific requirements. Um, there should be good ventilation. And it says right here, environmental precautions. To prevent further leakage of spillage, do not let the product enter your drains. Discharge into the environment must be avoided. So, um, just handle safely and please, if you do have it, if you are using it, please use it safely. Yes, it does its job. It has another name. Now, um, hmm, I forget, but um, uh, some of the orchid places, um, I, the place I bought my orchids from, they, um, they have... There's another name for it, but it's in it. It's in a product they use, but on large scale and with proper care. So yes, it done properly. It is good, but please be aware. That's maybe what I want to say. Please be careful. And um, I want to show you Alfinia. I meant to bring her over. Three flowers out and more to come. I mean, <laughs> she has been flowering since April 28th when I first got her. She's always had a flower. I noticed I got it from Roehampton. They're the ones that use potassium bernon. I read it on their site. I search everywhere, read everything. And uh, they use it properly, and it's good for what you do. Be aware, be knowledgeable. And look at this. Uh, I noticed they had these on sale. Now, this was my free orchid with my other one. Uh, but I noticed they sent me a thing saying they had some marked down. And it's still, it's not cheap, but anybody that's interested in looking, if they still have some, it was the last of... Some they were selling out, but she is beautiful. <laughs> I'm totally amazed at the wonders of this one. So I hope that's um, some help to you, and I hope it'll help you to, to uh, always be aware. And um, the other thing is, one reason I picked the water schedule, the water schedule I did and the different things I used was only after a lot of investigation. Some people say, well, black tea is no good. But black tea is very high in a lot of things and naturally it is good. It's good for people, it's good for plants. And um, 
I don't think we have to be using the chemical fertilizer all the time. And I think they enjoy that. It's like a storm come along and they got, you know, they got the ocean blew up and they got some seaweed and, you know, just it, it seems to be working very well. And, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Now, the reason I stopped using the hydrogen peroxide um, all the time was these two orchids, and it's funny I put them in here together, they suffered for a long time. They showed all the signs, like the leaves were coming small, it, they had scale, and it's going to lose this leaf soon, I'll be taking it off. Oh, probably two years ago. And um, I fought with this gale and I kept doing that and I'm sure that's what slowed down their progress because uh, in the last while their leaves are coming bigger, they're firm, they're healthier, they're shiny. So um, I, I thought, and before I read a lot, there is a bunch of videos out there. Uh, Classy Flowers has one on hydrogen peroxide, but there's more. And I will put some reading material today. I'll leave you lots of reading material so that you can go check it out and make your own decision. But, you know, um, be, safe, be safe. That's what I want. I want your orchids happy and you happy. So, uh, glad to know you guys. And we'll see you soon because we, we might be having to do another draw. Let's hope not. We're waiting. <laughs> okay, bye for now.